Hi, I'm here in Berkeley, California with Simone Stevens, who is an environmental and animal advocate. And in 2017, she proposed an ordinance for the city of Berkeley to ban giving fish as carnival prizes. So we're gonna talk a bit about the ordinance. And one of the goals of this interview is to get some information for how people might be able to propose a similar ordinance in their cities. So thank you for speaking with us. Mm -hmm. My pleasure, thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay, so first, can you just explain the ordinance? Like what, it, what does it stipulate? What's it mean for the city of Berkeley? Mm -hmm. So the ordinance bans the use of live animals, uh, especially fish, as prizes in fairs and carnivals, so that in the future, if there's any large event, they can't sell or use live animals as prizes, as it has been shown to be a very inhumane act. And I thought it was important to not let uh, the city of Berkeley utilize live animals as prizes any longer. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to propose this ordinance? So like why ban carnival fish as prizes? Mm -hmm. Well, in the summer of 2017, I was working as a legislative intern for a Berkeley council member by the name of Chris Worthington, who had pioneered a lot of really interesting legislation. And um, I'm a vegetarian at that time, I was a vegan extremely passionate about animal rights and protecting animals and I sort of remembered in the past like having friends or going to carnivals and seeing uh, fish sold as prizes and it was kind of a practice that always disgusted me a little bit because I know how terribly short the, the lives of those fish can be when they're given to people who don't know how to properly care for the fish. So a, a lot of it was just doing research on issues that I fi found passionate, uh, uh, sorry, that I was passionate about, um, that I found moving, uh, and that was in one of them. And so I wrote the legislation to yeah, ban something that I had personally seen and found uh, unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're not, at a carnival, you're not in an environment where you're looking to get a pet. Mm -hmm. So you're not, you, you, most people aren't prepared for the responsibility. They don't have, like, they haven't done the research. I think, unfortunately, a lot of media portrays the proper care for fish as involving really small fish bowls uh, with not a lot of entertainment or proper care for the fish or even a filter in some of those fish bowls. And since carnivals only give those fish out in, in bags, pretty much, there's no setup for the average person to be able to take care of these fish really well. And it's sort of just assumed that they're going to die extremely fast. And goldfish can live a fairly long time when, when cared for and when given the proper things that they need to survive, which they're not in any way when, when given out as prizes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like you're not, you're not invested in the fish's life if you're just getting it because you won a game. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so you were fortunate enough to have a position as legislative intern. So you were actually within local government and you were encouraged to write a proposal. Mm -hmm. But for people who aren't inside local government, but they want to pass a similar ordinance, where do they start? Like, who is the uh, appropriate authority to contact? Is it a city council member or a local board or commission? Mm -hmm. So there's a number of different individuals or bodies that would have the power to propose a piece of legislation like this to a city council. The mayor is one, any member of the city council. And some cities do have animal rights commissions the city of Berkeley actually used to have an animal rights commission. I was the vice chair. Uh, and so any person on this on these bodies could potentially propose it. I suggest looking up which district uh, your city council member belongs to. Most cities will have a map on their website where you can really easily determine which city council member represents you. And usually those websites will also have phone numbers or email. 
I would say that getting on the phone can be a great way to contact them, but email can also showcase a lot of support if you get multiple people to send emails. So any any person, any any person such as the mayor, city council member, or a member of an organization like the Animal Care Commission could potentially do it, but the fastest avenue is likely just the city council member that represents you. I've found that city council members are extremely responsive to their constituents. It's their job to be. Uh, so oftentimes just scheduling a meeting, if you can gather any friends to be there at the meeting, that can also help. A lot of times city council members are looking for a couple of things in an ordinance, whether or not it has uh, economic impacts to the city, the economic impacts or environmental impacts as well of this piece of legislation is quite minimal. Uh, whether or not it has widespread support, so having friends or showing that there's interest in your community can be helpful. And whether or not other cities have passed this legislation in the past. A lot of cities like to see that they're not the first city because it's hard to tell what the consequences of being the first city would be. So having another city such as Berkeley who's already passed this legislation can be helpful to convincing council members. Mm -hmm. And so before approaching the city council member, what should you have prepared? Should you already, you should say like, this is the Berkeley ordinance, this is what we want to see in our city, but should you also have uh, proof that there's a lot of community members that want to see this happen too? Like, should you already have prepared maybe a petition or what about like a letter from like an animal rescue organization or business in your community? Those are all fantastic suggestions. A lot of what the city council is looking for is support from the community, from the city. So if you can show that either in a letter from a reputable organization, a petition is a, another fantastic resource. Pretty much any evidence that you can showcase that proves to them that this has more widespread support than just you is a great path to getting your city council to approve something like this. And what about even social media? Like if there's a targeted like campaign or people, a number of people asking? So their social media can be a great way to get signatures for petitions and especially online petitions uh, such as change.org. That can be a way to get to showcase online support. Unfortunately, I would say a fair number of more older city council members are not as technologically savvy. I think a lot of them are getting on board, but a fair number don't really utilize Instagram. And if they have an Instagram, it's run by a staff member. So I think building support in your community through social media is a fantastic uh, method. But for actually showcasing support to council members, something more physical or tangible could be a better avenue. Okay. And what about, so this would definitely be effective for California cities. Mm -hmm. um, what about in, in cities in other states? Could it be, could it also serve as model legislation? Yes, there's nothing specifically California centric about, about this piece of legislation. Um, if a state doesn't have any stipulations in their uh, state uh, laws about this matter, then there should be no reason why it can't be passed. Um, a, a Google search about your state can pretty easily showcase which and which laws they don't, which and which laws they do or don't have pertaining to animal rights and animal uh, legislation. But I foresee that any any city in, in the U.S. could probably pretty easily pass this as long as there's nothing directly conflicting. When you were proposing this ordinance, was there anyone that argued against it? And did they have any valid reasons for why Berkeley shouldn't have adopted this? So the, the legislation in Berkeley got pretty unanimous support. It was put on the consent calendar for the city of Berkeley, which basically means 
pieces of legislation that have already been approved and vetted by city council members that just kind of get voted in in mass at a city council meeting. So they've already had time to, to read about it. And if no one has any objections or any debate about it or changes to the piece of legislation, it can just get voted in quite easily. So fortunately, no one on the Berkeley City Council had any objections to it. But online, I think there is still some misunderstanding about why this piece of legislation is necessary, uh, both because they don't understand it was intentioned as a model piece of legislation, trying to encourage other cities to pass similar pieces but also to shut down a practice that has no grounds for being legal in the first place. It just perpetuates animal cruelty, and it's not something that any, sh any city should want to be uh, a part of. Yeah. Yeah, like I think it's a simple, like as you said, common sense ordinance, but it has a much broader impact, which is just that <clears throat> our community is saying we have higher standards for fish, we want to protect them so yeah. yeah I'm so like happy that you're here and that you took the initiative to do that yeah I, I really hope that other people will take an interest in perhaps getting on board and proposing similar pieces of legislation I think that it's a great way to help protect animals that can't defend themselves can't speak for themselves but it's also a great way to just get involved in local city politics, get a deeper understanding of how legislation gets passed within cities. And it's it can be really interesting and a good time and a fantastic experience. And I would recommend it just for that, if for nothing else. Yeah, yeah. And you, Simone was in high school when she proposed this, which is incredible. So it just goes to show that, you know, we have a lot of power and local government is a great way to exercise our democracy and this is a great uh, way to experience that. That's true. Yeah, I was only a high school student, which I think just proves that if you are committed enough and you get involved, that you can make important changes in your community. I'm still around Berkeley now, graduated UC Berkeley, uh, more involved in the, my community than ever and it makes me really happy that the place that I live has protections for these vulnerable creatures. Yeah, no, I know that people who watch this are going to be inspired and hopefully empowered to do something similar. So I'll link the Berkeley ordinance in the description and then, yeah, down below <laughs> and uh, any other resources that might come up. So yeah, thank you again so much. Yes, thanks for having me. It was wonderful to talk about. Yeah.